Weekend Edition. Good morning, welcome back. I'm Lauren Osborne and today's Saturday, June 18th. Let's check in with meteorologist Arden Gregory for a look at your forecast this morning. Sounds like today's gonna be a beautiful day to get out, enjoy the sun and the warm weather. Absolutely a fantastic day to get out and about across the board. Plenty of sunshine on tap for your weekend forecast and we are nice and dry already this morning. Saw some rain overnight, but Pinpoint Doppler showing nice clean sweeps over the mountains now and will stay nice and dry throughout the rest of your day today. Temperature wise starting out nice and mild this morning. Temperatures ranging from the low to mid to even upper 60s across the mountains. Wise the cool spot at 61. Prestonsburg and Paintsville both sitting at 63. 65 in both Jackson and Pikeville, 64 in Harlan, 66 in Jackson, 67 in Middlesboro, and Somerset, the warm spot at 68 degrees this morning. As we go through the rest of your morning, those temperatures will continue to climb and will eventually top out in the low to mid 80s later on this afternoon. That's a little bit warmer than yesterday, but that humidity will be nice and low, so it will be a comfortable heat. Plenty of sunshine all day long, but there's rain in the forecast for later this week, and I'll have the details on that coming up a little later. Arden, thank you. Searching for answers after a deadly fire. Family members of a Pike County woman who died in a fire are mourning her loss and trying to figure out why she did not make it out alive. Firefighters found Lily and Jean Collins dead in her apartment after a fire early Sunday morning. Collins' family told WYMT's Chandler Markey they're not sure why Collins didn't get out in time. I said if she's alive, she would call me. Early Sunday morning, firefighters called Anna Sloan after her daughter's apartment complex in the Mouthcard community caught fire. They could not find her daughter Lillian. And they just kept looking and looking and looking till about the end of the day and then they found her or found what they thought was her. 59-year-old Lillian Jean Collins lived in the apartment under Rogers Grocery with her cat named Frisky. Now her family wants to know how and where the fire started. When they knocked the door in and hollered for her, they couldn't get no answer. But her cat uh, came out, but they never did uh, hear her. So the not knowing of what happened to her is, is the worst. For now, they're left with photographs and memories of their daughter, sister, and friend. And we're going to miss her. It's been hard on my mommy. My mommy's 77 years old, and that's her oldest child. So we're really going to miss her. Family members thank the emergency responders who answered the call. In Pike County, Chandler Markey, WYMT Mountain News. Kentucky State Police are investigating the cause of the fire. A Johnson County man is behind bars after deputies say he shot at his wife. Deputies arrested Charles Blankenship yesterday after responding to a call that he shot at his wife three times at their home in the Felka community. Authorities say Blankenship's wife and child escaped the home without harm. They say Blankenship resisted arrest before he was taken into custody. Deputies say they also found meth, pills, and marijuana on Blankenship. He is facing several charges, including one endangerment and resisting arrest. A father and son charged in a man's murder have struck a plea deal in Pulaski County. Rexel and Jesse Brown were charged for the October 2015 shooting death of Danny Poor at a cabin. Rexel Brown pleaded guilty to manslaughter in exchange for 15 years in prison. Jesse Brown pleaded guilty to being a felon in possession of a handgun in exchange for a 10-year sentence. The men will be formally sentenced July 21st. And Whitley County Sheriff's deputies arrested a woman they say put four children in danger. Whitley County Sheriff's deputies arrested Casey Stevens after pulling her over Thursday night. On Highway 25, investigators say Stevens was intoxicated and had four children in her car. They say they also found nearly 400 prescription pills in her purse, most of them Xanax. Deputies charge Stevens with DUI, drug trafficking, and one endangerment. Searching for a solution, petitioners in Inez want to take up a vote on alcohol sales in November. City officials say it's in an effort to find new revenue. Just this week, they decided their budget could not afford a police department, so they dissolved theirs. WYMT's Alex Casper Peak shares reactions. In hopes of bringing in money, the Inez City Commission started a petition 
asking people if alcohol should be sold in the area. With coal severance tax being uh, down to near nothing anymore. City Commissioner Dennis Hall says they must increase revenue. We're practically broke and uh, we couldn't, uh, I believe the mayor said we had about two years left if we kept on going the way we were. Uh, and then the city would have to be dissolved. Hall says they need to find ways to bring in money without adding more taxes. Some say right now the city is losing out. I've seen a lot of people from the, the county and other places going other, where, other locations to get it and, and um, why not keep them here? While others strongly oppose the proposal. We have a, a terrible problem with drug addiction and I think bringing alcohol into the midst of that addiction problem is one of the most ignorant things we could possibly do. Nearly 150 verified signatures are needed to get the issue on the November ballot. In Martin County, Alex Casper Peak, WIMT, Mountain News. The commission voted to start the petition Monday after a 3-2 to two vote. Beginning Monday, traffic will be delayed along US-23 and Iville. Highway officials say the delay will allow them to start a new phase to fix a rock slide. They say the delays could impact travel for weeks. The slide started weeks ago and crews have worked since to fix the issue. Officials say some rock will need to come over the hillside, which will cause delays. He made the ultimate sacrifice. Last September, a Kentucky State Police trooper died after someone shot him during a traffic stop in western Kentucky. And police want to make sure Trooper Cameron Ponder is not forgotten. During last night's State Police Awards ceremony in Lexington, his family took part in a special tribute for him. Victor Puente has the story. The group gathered this evening in Lexington was comprised of Kentucky State Police troopers, officers, and detectives from across the state. You are among those that are at the tip of that spear. You really are, every single day. And as some of you know uh, more than others, uh, it, it can come at a tremendous price, tremendous price. A price Trooper Cameron Ponder paid last September after making a traffic stop. He was working to find lodging for the people in the vehicle when the driver took off, leading to a chase. The driver eventually crashed and then shot Ponder through his window. Among the many awards handed out was one for the fallen trooper. The Governor's Medal of Valor is posthumously presented to Trooper Cameron Ponder and accepting on his behalf is his family. Ponder's father said this award means a lot. He said it honors the greatest gift they received, their son. But it, it means everything to us. Um, a medal is a medal. Cameron, Cameron was our medal. Uh, he had a heart of gold, uh, he was strong as iron, and out of his tongue flowed silver. Ponder had been a trooper for nine months before he was killed. He went from serving his country to serving the Commonwealth. When he came back from the Navy, he was searching for something he could do that could bring him happiness. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what truly brought him happiness was serving others. In Lexington, Victor Puente. WYMT Mountain News. A couple law enforcement officers from our coverage area also picked up honors last night. Chris McQueen was honored as Kentucky Vehicle Enforcement Officer of the Year, while Adam Childress won Trooper of the Year. McQueen is from Corbin, while Childress is from Somerset and works out of Post 11 in London. 600 new jobs are coming to Rockcastle County. Congressman Hal Rogers and Governor Matt Bevan were on hand this after yesterday afternoon for the announcement as part of Shaping Our Appalachian Region, or SOAR. The jobs are with SOAR's HOV and will largely be clerical and data entry positions. Company officials say they have operated in Rockcastle County since 1992 and praise the quality of the workers found in Kentucky. We want people to sort of take ownership and feel like they're owners in delivering services to our clients and building careers, right? I mean, that, that's what this is all about. Company officials say the expansion more than doubles their staff in Kentucky. They say they hope to have at least 1,000 applications in the coming weeks. Well, firing up the grill, folks in Corbin are enjoying Burger Week, supporting local restaurants and the different burgers they offer. I met up with owners of two restaurants to hear how it's helping the community. Fire up your appetite for Burger Week, a week dedicated to all different types of burgers. Six restaurants, six different burgers. 
frying and serving up different hamburgers, Ed Gar, owner of the Dixie Cafe, says he loves the economic support it gives to the area. Business wise, probably 20 to 30 percent. As some restaurants created their own combination, chef and owner of Basil's Italian Restaurant says when coordinators asked him to take part in the event, he didn't think he would have anything to offer. We want you to be part of Burger Week. I'm thinking. Uh, we don't do burgers. It's not something that this restaurant does. We're an Italian restaurant. But after getting creative in the kitchen, he made a meatball burger and says it's a hit. So I developed, I took the meatball mix and I made burgers out of it and baked them in the oven instead of, you know, put them on a fryer grill. And it worked out amazing. But DiMaggio says it's not about the burger, it's about getting people inside the restaurant to eat local. They may not be ordering a burger, but they're ordering meals and they're impressed by that. And that makes a big difference to us, you know. But restaurant owners agree Burger Week is bringing the community together on Main Street. Burger Week goes through today. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we'll check in with Jason Lindsay to see what he's working on for us in this morning's Hooked on Science segment. And plenty of sunshine on tap this weekend. Stay with us. I'll have your full seven-day forecast when we come back.